Okay. Oh. Ah, oh, let me fix this. Sorry, guys. I just recorded it, and then it says, oh, no, your video just stopped playing. I'm like, what? So now I have to do this over again. Okay, let me see where I am now. Okay, so. Okay, so let's start, let's start this again. Yeah, I just said that I didn't have any more minutes on my on my camera. Okay, so we got to start over and um Okay, so we are on chapter 12 on 1st Samuel. So, but first before we we start where is that little paper? Oh, I have where did I had that little had that here, and I don't know what I did with the paper. I had this in Psalms. Uh, okay, let me put this this way. The stickiness. Okay, well I'll look for Psalms in a minute. And then I had another little paper, and I don't know what I did with it. No, oh, I think it was right here. Okay, so be, before we start. Ah, you're still crooked. Ah, I really, and then, and then I hate wasting time because it's like, <coughs> oh, my throat is so dry still. Okay, so um, we're just going to sing, before we start, we're just going to sing that little song from Amy McPherson, and it goes, um, I, you can catch her if you want, um, you can catch her, like, if you Google it, you can catch her on any kind of YouTube where it says um, Pioneer uh, uh, Warriors or something like that of, of the faith of God or something like that. And you should be able to find her. Anyway, she used to be, like, at a little bank where like by a river and she was there with all of her um congregation <coughs> and she would just sing like this little song and it went like this i think you probably heard me sing it before because there were a couple of times where i already sang it but it goes the more we get together 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 the more we get together the happier we'll be for his ways are our ways and our ways are his ways the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Yeah, to me, it was such a, you know, nice little catchy, catchy little, little song. And I also went to Isaiah because it had um, that verse about what she's talking about. So in Isaiah 55, 55, 89, it's... And my thought, says the Lord, are not like yours, and my ways are different from yours. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways and thoughts about above your ways. So, <clears throat> and everything that the Lord, that we think about, all our goals, our plans, our ambitions, you know, you know, everything that we want to do, God has a better way. If we think about things and we're like, oh, I'm going to do this, I want to do that. He goes, hey, well, I got a better way for you to do it. Or you have a thought, well, that's a good idea, but I got a, I have another thought that would be better than what you're thinking about. And that's how we go through in life. We always think that our plans, um, our ideas and everything are just ours. But in, in a way they are, but with God in it, he can make them better. He can make our plans better better so <clears throat> every time we think about doing something always involve God because he'll make whatever it is that you're trying to do he'll make it more in other words it'll be more prosperous or any like you said anything you touch will be pro it'll be prosperous so that's how you should be living your life. Like you have to remember, his his thoughts are higher than our thoughts, and his ways are higher than our ways. So always keep that in mind. Another thing I was um, talking about was 
Uh, I, I was just talking about so many things before the, the camera stopped. So, but I was talking about um, how we have to remember that everything we do, everything that we think about, you know, with him in our lives, it'll, it'll be far more, far more better. I'm kind of like lost right now because I'm like, I can't believe this camera. I've been going through a lot of problems with this camera. Like, I'm I'm like, seriously, I'm like, ah. But it's okay. Okay, so let's just get into the into the word. And as you know, the, the Bible is spiritual food. So we have to try to eat as much of this as we can. Okay, but I'm going to talk about a little bit more about food in a minute. <coughs> okay, so um, this is um, in verse... In chapter 12, it's more like a farewell kind of speech. So, then Samuel said to the people of Israel, I have done what you asked me to do. I have given you a king to rule you. And now you have to lead, and now you have him to lead you. As for me, I am old and gray and my sons are with you. I have been your leader from my youth until now. Here I am. If I have done any wrong, accuse me now in the presence of the Lord. And the king he has chosen. If I have done anything wrong, accuse me now in the presence of the Lord and the king that you have chosen. Have I taken anybody's cow or anybody's donkey? Have I cheated or oppressed anyone? Have I accepted a bribe from anyone? If I have done any of these things, I will pay back whatever I have taken. The people answered, No, you have not cheated, uh, cheated us or oppressed us. You have not taken anything from anyone. Samuel replied, Then the Lord the Lord and the king he has chosen, chosen are witnesses today that you have found me to be completely innocent. The, yes, the Lord is our witness, they answered. Samuel continued, The Lord is the one who chose Moses and Aaron and who brought your ancestors out of Egypt. Now, stand where you are, and I will accuse you before the Lord by reminding you of all the mighty actions the Lord did to save you and your ancestors. When Jacob and his family went to Egypt and the Egyptians oppressed them, your ancestors cried to the Lord for help, and he sent Moses and Aaron who brought them out of Egypt and settled them in this land. But the people had forgotten the Lord their God. And so he let the Philistines and the king of Moab and Caesarea, commander of the army of the city of Hazor, fight against your ancestors and conquer them. Then they cried to the Lord for help and said, We have sinned because we turned away from you, Lord, and worshipped the idols of Baal and Astarte. Rescue us from our enemies, and we will worship you. And the Lord sent Gideon, then Barak, then Je Jes Jesaphat, and finally me. Each of us rescued you from your enemies, and you lived in safety. But when, but when you saw the king of Nahash of Ammon was about to attack you, you rejected the Lord as your king and said to me, we want a king to rule us. Now here is the king you chose. You asked for him, and now the Lord has given him to you. All will go well with you if you honor the Lord your God, serve him, listen to him, and obey his commands. And if you and your king follow him, but if you do not listen to the Lord, but disobey his commands, he will be against you and your king. So then stand where you are, and you will see great things which the Lord is going to do. It is the dry season, isn't it? But I will pray, and the Lord will send thunder and rain, and rain. I will pray, and the Lord will send thunder and rain. When this happens, you will realize that you committed a great sin against the Lord. When you asked him for a king... So Samuel prayed on and on that day, and that same day the Lord sent thunder and rain. Then all the people became afraid of the Lord and of Samuel. And they said to Samuel, Please, sir, pray to the Lord your God for us so that we won't die. We now realize that besides all our other sins, we have sinned by asking for a king. 
Don't be afraid, Samuel answered. Even though you have done such an evil thing, do not turn away from the Lord, but serve him with all your heart. Don't go after false idols. They cannot help you or save you, for they are not real. The Lord has made a solemn promise, and he will not abandon you, for he has decided to make you his own people. As for me, the Lord forbid that I should sin against him by no, long, by no longer praying for you. Instead, I will teach you what is good and right for you to do. Obey the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. Remember the great things that he has done for you. But if you continue to sin, you and your king will be destroyed. <coughs> okay, so let's let's read the commentary. Now, the commentary, again, this is more about Samuel giving his goodbyes. Samuel's message was the combination of coordination, coordination, address and revival sermon and a farewell speech. He pointed out the greatness of their sin in asking for king, then called for their new dedication. As key theme in the address to witness, um, the witness of the godly leader. The people had rejected a proven godly leader for a man who had won only one victory and whose devotion to the Lord was yet unknown. Samuel was disappointed, but he left office knowing that his conscience was clear. So you have to remember, um, Samuel did what God told him to do, like from from beginning when he heard, you know, his voice when he was, what, 12 years old? And, you know, and Eli told him, well, if you, if you hear him one more time, answer him. And from that day, he served the Lord all his life. And when, and he was trying to remind everybody that <coughs> you guys so wanted, so much wanted a king, but you had a king the whole time. You had him ever since you, they, God rescued you, um, you guys from Egypt. And he sent, he sent Aaron and Moses to do that job. And he did other other miraculous things. I mean, like, what else do you want? But I guess in their eyes, I guess they wanted, like, they couldn't see God. I mean, yeah, they, they can hear about him and they can see all the miraculous things, but he wasn't, like, really visible to, to the eye. <clears throat> and I guess, that, I guess that's what they were missing. But, see, in our day like right now, we can see God, we can see Jesus, we can, we can know that he is because we, ha we, we live by faith. We know that he exists because of the things that he does for the miracles that he, that happen, you know, on our behalf. We know he is who he is. We don't have to see him. We just, we know for certain that he's there. But back in the day, um, they didn't. I mean, they knew, kind of, but it's like they wanted to see something tangible. They wanted to see who this God really is or, you know, to be seen. So they wanted, like, a real king, like, they can see that that king could rule over them. So... That's when Samuel kind of like got upset and he goes, well, you, you guys have been rescued like so many times and, and every time God rescues you or he sends somebody to rescue you, you guys keep sinning. And like he did in Isaiah, they, they would um, send a leader and they would be fine for 20 or 40 or another 20 or another 40 years. They would be fine, they would be safe, but within those periods of time, they were always sinning and falling back into their old ways and not listening and, and committing crimes and doing all over all all unlawful things and you know, it was just they just wanted to live whichever which way they wanted to live and, and think that it was alright when it wasn't. Even as of today, 
we're in the same boat. We just can't live, you know, like it's okay to live with any, any way you want and not, not pay for the consequences because you will pay for the consequences. So he was trying to let them know, hey, you know, I, I did my job. You know, I did what I was supposed to do and I gave you guys what you wanted. And because of that, <coughs> in other words, you insulted, you know, you insulted God by asking him for a king. That was kind of like a sin. How can you do that? But he, but God said, fine, you know, give them what they want. Give them a king. And because of this, and until this day, we, we always have to follow whatever king says we got to do. But God did say, he did say at the end, he goes, this is how it's going to go down. If you're if you're king and you do evil, if you're king, you and your king do evil. But if you continue to sin, you and your king will be destroyed. <coughs> and this is how I feel like we're we're living in those days. If you and your leader um, keep doing evil, you'll be wiped out. And that's how I feel like America is on that. Almost like towards that threshold. If this country keeps doing evil and thinking that it's it's okay, that it's all right, and they're not going to pay for their consequences of how leaders are doing this and leaders are doing that, and they're getting away with this and they're getting away with that, just remember, he said, if you and your king sin, do evil, you're going to be wiped out. And some, somehow I get... America, America, we might be at, our, at the top of our game and we might be the best of the best of the best, but that doesn't mean we're good, <laughs> you know, it's like we keep doing bad things and it's going to catch up and it's going to catch up to the point where God is going to say, I had enough, you're out of there <coughs> and he'll do it. I to come, I feel like sometimes we're, that's a right, we're not mentioned in the Bible because something happened and we were wiped out. <laughs> so, that's, that's a come, pray for your country, pray for your leaders because we're, we're not down a good road, guys. We are not down a good road at all. Now, I was talking about, what was I talking about? I gotta start writing things down because I'm always forgetting what I'm talking about. Um, I think I was talking about the things in heaven. I mean, when we live in eternity up there, I mean, we like I said, we all want to live free. We all want want to eat. I don't know why I was mentioning that last week, but you know, we all we all have to work for what we have today. We all have to do that. We all have to toil. I mean, we didn't have to, but because of Adam and Eve and their fall. That's what we fell into. <clears throat> but living free and eating in this world, it, that's not all. You know, there's nothing really to that. I mean, we can live free and eat for the rest of our lives. But at the end of the day, like what he was talking about, don't envy rich people and everything they have. Because at the end of the day, they don't take a thing with them. And I always found that kind of like, how come? <laughs> how come we could? We work so hard, you know, to get what we want to get, to have what we want to have. We can't take anything with us. That's sad. That is really sad. But, you know, you, you got to ask yourself, you think, what do you want to do in your life? What do you want to accomplish? Uh, what, live free and, and eat? Okay, well, well, how do you see... <coughs> how do you see yourself... In a few years from now, uh, living free and eating, okay. Well, what's your long-term uh, thing that you want to do? I mean, what do you want as a career? Live free and eat. I mean, we all want that. We all want to have that kind of life. But, I mean, I'm not saying that it's not, you know, like it can't happen. It can happen. I mean, you could end up in a life where you could just live free and eat. But I'll guarantee you, you have to go to school for more than 12 years. I'm pretty sure you have to have some kind of great career. 
you have to have some kind of great empire. Because that's the only way you're going to get to that point where you can live free and eat and, and be merry all your life. Or for the rest of, the, of your life. Because other than that, there ain't no way that's going to happen. No way. And the only place where that can happen is in heaven. Because up there, you can live free and eat all you want. You don't even have to eat, eat if you don't want to eat in heaven. Like you don't. Because <coughs> you remember, we don't have that kind of, we don't, the body we have down here, we don't have up there. There is no digestive system up there. We don't have that. We only have that in order for us to reproduce more people. But our bodies change when we go up there. We don't have that. So, if and when you think about things and you want to have that kind of life, just know it that you're going to have to work your tail off to get there. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. Now, if you do want to eat something and if you do want to live free read the word because this is this is what you should be eating this the word of god and i'm not i know it's not like food I'm, i get that i'm not saying not to eat food because you do need to eat food to be you know to stay healthy and things like things like that nutrients things like that but if you're living a spiritual life you have to feed it spiritual food it goes hand in hand this way if you're living a spiritual life and you don't see things happening it's because you're not eating this and you got to feed it's just like a flower you grow a flower and if you don't give it water and and sun it's not going to grow the flower needs just like you know, human beings, we need food to grow and to be, you know, nutritional uh, food so, so we can grow healthy. Well, our spiritual life needs the same thing. If you want to have a spiritual life and enhance the things from, from the kingdom of God, you have to feed it spiritual food. It's the same way. <coughs> now, um... The things the, the other thing I wanted to talk about was miracles because when it comes to miracles, I mean, we live down here. This this life that we live down here is temporary. It's not. It's not something that. Like we're we're citizens of the kingdom. Okay, that's where that's where we want to head to. You have to remember if you're storing up treasures, like. Like you said, everything that you have down here, once you die, you can't take anything with. But when you store up treasures down here, it's not really treasures like physical treasures, but it's spiritual treasures. That, when you die, you get to, get to um, have when you go home. Because those, spirit, those spiritual treasures that you're storing up down here will be up there. So if you want to take some things that are from down here up there, store up spiritual treasures. This way, when you leave this earth and go up, you'll have them up there. You will have them. Um, <clears throat> it's just like, oh, I'm trying to think here. Um, and, and this stuff will last for eternity. It's not gonna, like, it's not gonna, um, like, like, wither away or anything. This stuff will last, like, for eternity. Down here, we, nothing lasts for everything. It lasts forever. It will die. Eventually, everything will disappear, die, or whatever. <coughs> but the things in heaven, like the, the verse says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So yeah, we can bring things down from heaven down here, but we can also store things in heaven that we do, that we can do here that are called heavenly treasures and store them up so that when we go up there, a place will be prepared for us. But another thing, yeah, some things from heaven could be down here. 
but our spiritual treasures that we store up will be up there, if that makes any sense. Oh, miracles. That's another thing. Where do you think miracles come from? Miracles come from the kingdom of heaven. That's where they come from. Why do you think, you know, sometimes when you go through a situation, you're like, oh my God, we need a miracle. Or, oh my God, it's going to take a miracle for, for this thing to happen or for this thing to go away. We need a miracle. Where do you think miracles come from? They don't come from this. They don't come from this, this world. They don't come from the, from the world under. Miracles come from people who are warriors of the Spirit of God and who get on their knees and pray and they're calling for that miracle to come down and, and rescue someone or save someone or for something to have victory over something. Because people are on their knees praying for that thing to come down. So just remember, you have to remember, when we live here, we live here, and that's fine. We do our diligence duty. We got to do whatever. But you're not from here. You're from the kingdom of God. So start living that way. Stop living like you're poor. Stop living like you don't have no hope. Stop living like there's nothing left for you to do. And you're tired because you try, try, try. Nothing works. Nothing happens. Well, start living like you have hope. Like you are rich. Like everything you touch will turn into gold. Because that's what God says will happen. But you got to live this way, not the world's way. And there is just so, so, so much. I don't know how much I have here. Okay, so <laughs> with that being said, I think I said too much, but um, I'm just going to try to break everything down. There is just so much to learn and a lot of stuff that people don't know. Um, yeah, but and and now I'll, I'll try to get into prayer with you guys because I, I don't I I don't pray long I I don't I don't pray long. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Lord bless this person. Amen. Lord, this girl needs help. Thank you, Lord. Amen. <laughs> Terrible when it comes to praying. <laughs> They're so short. I just get right to the point. <laughs> but um. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if you really, really, really want to pray, you will get on your knees or, I mean, if there's a situation where it's dire straight, prostrate, get on, get on your face, stretch out on the floor, put your face to the ground and ask God for help. I'm really serious. <laughs> okay, guys, so I can fish in the sea. So glad you caught me and we will catch you next week on Faith Night Friday. Bye.